Run your section up, just enough for the rest of us to eat. Let's rip the flesh from the rich. I ripped the vest from your suit by the Brooks, brother. Your coupe, get a few slugs. Your boost through this new mug, but my speech is immaculate. Yo, reach is inadequate. I preach for the bastard kids, making raps on the trash can lid. You gave us magic, and we made magic like Irvin's mama. And I witnessed the curse of karma. My relics, my current armor. That's risk slit and prevention. Pay attention to the time. What's up, y'all? You are now watching another Artist Exposed interview for Jazz Mag, and today I'm kicking it off with Nashville's own Mike Floss. What How up, you feeling up? today? I'm good. How you doing? I'm good. Right. I'm good. So, here in your hometown, I know a lot of people know you as Open Mike, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you changed your name to Mike Floss. Yeah. What inspired the name change? Tell well, us. Well, okay, so I'm from Nashville. You know, it's a music city, so mm -hmm. um, it's a whole lot of Open Mike nights here, and I was having trouble with people thinking I'm performing at places I'm not performing at because of the name. And then on top of that, like just online, trying to gain traction in this in this digital world, um, it was difficult to search. It was difficult to find my music. It was difficult to create that traction that I needed to really take my career where I wanted to go. So I went with a name that was organic to who I was, given that my, my given name is Mike, but um, I had a song called Floss that was on a, on a mixtape I put out that was like the first song on that tape. And I said, right. uh, I turned my flaws into floss. So I just adopted that as my last name and, and rolled with it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So I know you probably get asked a lot of questions about Nashville. Nashville's growing. Yeah. You know, so a lot of people may want to relate you to that. But I want to know a little bit something more deep. <laughs> I want to okay. know a little bit more about you. So why do you rap? Why do I rap? Why um, rap? Like out of all the things you could have done. Man, um... Sometimes you find something that's fulfilling, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's kind of no replacing that. It's it's not really too much um too much I can say besides it was just the, um <clears throat> I was genuinely moved to do it, you know? Sometimes you you find your purpose in life, and I feel like given I have a greater purpose beyond just the craft, but I feel like this is probably the first building block towards my overall life purpose, so I'm rolling with it. Okay, okay. So, I don't know if you've heard of country music star Miranda Lambert. Have you heard of her? I'm familiar. Okay, well, y'all have, like, y'all share the same name of your single. So, Kerosene. Oh, oh she has a song called Kerosene. She does. She has really? a song called Kerosene. Is it tight? It's, 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 it's like, that's all right. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not no, your Kerosene. Okay, of course But, not. you know, it's cool. Yeah, okay. It's cool. So, is there any significance behind the name of the single? Uh... The, the concept is just, man, it, it's, okay, for a lot of people, it was more of an aesthetic and a feeling and just a nostalgia because we had a, if you ever, okay, if you ever lived and, you, and your heater go out, and a lot of times what people do, when they don't have a lot of money, instead of replacing the heater, they get a kerosene heater, which you can put in the middle of the room, you fill it up with kerosene, but what happens is, that smell of that gas gets in everything. It yes. gets in all your clothes, the it whole does. house smells like gas. And when you go to school, people can smell on your clothes that you smell like kerosene. And, and even before, when I was growing up, I had that experience. Um, that's always been a, a representation of uh, underclass, lower class people as far as on an economic level. Mm -hmm. And um, that's just a, just a, a, a reflection of my frustration, my anger, and really where I'm coming from as an artist, especially in this racial climate in America right now, and, and the tension and, and the stress and everything that comes along with it, and I think all of that was released with that record. Okay, okay. Good answer. That was a good answer. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you just dropped your album, Don't Blame the Youth, right? Yeah. So, if not the youth, who do we blame? Uh, we blame... Man, we blame systematic oppression. We blame um, we blame environments that are designed for us to fail. We blame uh, political policies that are structured to negatively affect people of color. I mean, there's a lot of places you could point the finger at, but most importantly, it's really not about pointing the finger. It's about resolving these issues, and it's about embracing the reality of where we currently live and what we currently experience. So I think the youth are just a reflection of that reality more than anything else so it's not so much about placing blame as much as it is first accepting what was really going on and then figuring out how to improve it cake better by the case taste test take swing better better home base home free free base madam <laughs> Cause I'm back, yeah. Yeah. This, that, new back, yeah. Back, back, cause I'm back. 
So what inspires your lyrics and your style of rap and the beats you choose and things like that? Um, man, I would say beats inspire the lyrics. Okay. So the selection of the beats is based on emotion. So sometimes there's particular types of records I may want to make or there may be a like if I'm working with my guy Schmuck the Loyal, um, who's a, who produced Kerosene, who's super talented, crazy producer. Um, if I'm working with him, we may sit down and say, yo, we really need to make a record with this level of energy or something that we can do that's going to be the first song of like a 30 minute set. Or we okay. may base it on the live show. Or other times he may just make something and be like, yo, I made this. I think this is crazy. Let me know if we can get in and finish it because we like to work hand to hand instead of just like him making a whole beat and then I just rap on it. So we like to build together. So if he has an idea that he feels like it's rolling in the right direction, he'll play it for me and then we'll start building on it. Okay. Yeah. So what would you say have been or who would you say your favorite collabs have been with so far, like in your rap career? Like all the songs you've done, even songs you may not have put out. Mm. Um collabs. I don't really work with a lot of rappers to be honest. I'm kind of a ball hog when it comes to the <laughs> when it comes to the That's verses. Okay. Um but I had some I got a song with Stan. Okay. That uh every time we perform it is crazy. Uh definitely a favorite. I like working with Duck O McFly who's the homie, he's a producer, he lives in Atlanta now. Um he's amazing just on all levels. He's like a executive producer, producer A and R kinda guy, just overall creative. Um and really this new stuff I'm doing with Schmuck the Loyal is is really like pushing me to to become something new as an artist. Not so much maybe not something new, but kinda evolve and progress. Okay. Yeah. So what would you say motivates you before a stage performance? Like, you know how you gotta get yourself amped up? Uh probably Jack Daniels. <laughs> and uh uh, I don't know. Jack Daniels and a couple bottles of water. That's about all I need. And then, always, it's always good when you have a good crowd before you walk on stage. You know, and sometimes yeah. you're fortunate to have that opportunity, but other times you gotta play in front of a smaller crowd and um, build up. Especially with me being a new artist. So, when you have a good crowd and you can kind of peek around the curtain and be like, let's see what's going on. And they got the energy already. That'll get you excited, but yeah. other than that, man, you just got to manufacture it and command it. That's what's up. So, growing up in the music city, mm -hmm. everybody focuses on country music here. Yeah. So, what would you say gravitated you towards the hip-hop side of things? Could you see yourself doing any other style of music? Uh, yeah. I've written R&B records um, that I'm, I'm trying to get placed. So, <laughs> y'all need them R&B bars. I got those. But, bars. Uh, I, I really don't see um, that being a priority for me right now. Okay. It's more so about what I'm doing and, and what made me want to rap. I mean, I didn't grow up on hip-hop music, <clears throat> which a lot of people know, like my dad being a jazz musician, like I kind of came up on that wave of black music, but um, it was just something that I was pulled into, you know, going to school, freestyling with your friends type deal. So it was, uh, it was a natural transition for me. I didn't really have anything to gain or anything to prove. You know, it's just something that I fell in love with. What At what moment would you say you realized your talent? Like, because I know, like, I like to freestyle. Okay, you got a little bit of that. I like to freestyle a little bit. Okay. But I would never just be like, I want to be a rapper. Yeah. You know? So it's at what ridiculous. moment did you <laughs> realize, like, I should really pursue this? I'm really talented in this area. Um, I would say it was probably around 2011. Okay. Um, and I put out a mixtape called For The Rebels. And that was the first time I had been making mix CDs and stuff and, and rapping or whatever, but never like in an organized format. So I put together an actual mixtape and was like, let me figure out how to put this on a blog or something. And it, the internet loved it. So Double XL emails me weeks later like, yo, we want to feature you. I'm like, yo, how does this even, how does this even happen this fast? But I had no, I had nothing to follow up with. You know, this was just yeah. me trying to figure it out, and I started getting a bunch of like internet exposure quick. And I was like, let me actually get my business structure together and get all of this right because we can really do this. If I if I did that by accident, if we really put the right power and the right um, the right people and relationships behind this, then it can be something it can be something very real. So it was around that time. That's what's up. So it's only been like five years. Yeah, 
Five years, yeah. That is dope. Yeah. That's dope, because you made Seems a lot like of noise less than that. Five. Jesus Christ, five years. <laughs> Seems like yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Really? So, how do you plan on being like a musical inspiration to your audience? Because, well, mm -hmm. now, so far, have you had a lot of people tell you that you inspire them? Yeah, I have, actually, and more more recently than ever. Um, and people are really, the music is inspiring, and I think for where I'm at and the level of communication I have with my fan base, mm -hmm. it's not only the music that inspires them as much as it is the way we go about doing things. And the, and the progress we make with it. Because people been knowing I can rap. Like as far as in Nashville, it's nothing new that I can rap. Like it's right. almost not even impressive anymore. Like of course, <laughs> of course, it's almost like when you hear Kendrick verse, it's like I know Kendrick's gonna go crazy. So it's really not as impressive as somebody you've never heard before. Right. So um, on a Nashville level, they're more so inspired by the progress and the light that I'm shining back on the city. Okay. And that's more so a testament of, I think, who I am as a person more than it is who I am as an artist, but they're intertwined, so I'll take that. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what can you tell our jazz magnets about what Mike Floss has planned for 2016? Because we know you got some stuff. Um, 2016? I ain't got nothing going on, man. <laughs> Bye. We don't believe so, it. <laughs> no, I got I got a bunch of music coming. I've got some um some major looks as far as the way we're gonna present the music and media and content and things like that. But right now I'm in the studio, so I just came off the tour um, okay. two weeks ago, I think it was. And uh, now it's time to really hit the studio hard. So after we do that, we'll be back on the road again, but in a different way. And people will see how that unfolds when it's time to present all of that yeah well we'll be first to know right absolutely man top of the list top of the list <laughs> all right that's another artist exposed interview with jazz mag stay tuned and see who we have this that new black this that new black yeah they don't want no problems because they don't want to see and we ain't got no option but to be all we can be put a flag into his pocket and a rocket in his